some of you have been hearing a lot of coverage about the Samsung Galaxy S4, and you're probably wondering if you should pre-order. The answer is yes. Abram just got finished reviewing it, and he's going to tell us the greatest hits and the greatest misses of the phone. So Abram, tell me what you like, what you don't like. Uh, let's start with the design. So this design is kind of plasticky. It looks a lot like the Galaxy S3, uh, and you know you you would be forgiven if you didn't recognize the difference between this and a previous Galaxy S phone. But in uh, the black color that we have here, which is uh, Black Mist, it, it does look kind of nice. It's it's no comparison to say the iPhone or the HTC One. But by using this lightweight polycarbonate design, there are a number of advantages. You can remove the back panel here, so you can get to the battery and replace it, and you can get to the micro SD card and upgrade it, which allows you to add to the memory really cheaply. It's only 4.6 ounces, which makes it a lot lighter than, uh, than some of its smaller competitors in the marketplace. Uh, and it just feel, it's just really, really thin. So, uh, you know, while it's not exactly a superb design, it's extremely functional. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the display. It looks pretty crisp and I love the color. It's very vibrant. This is the most vibrant display I've ever seen. Okay. It's not the brightest, but it, it seems like the, the when we put it side by side with the iPhone and the HTC One, the colors just really popped and the images were sharper, even though as compared to the HTC One, this is a slightly lower pixel density because this is five inches and that's 4.7. This 1080p screen uh, really produced the best looking images. Okay. So when we were at the S4 event, they ran down quite a few special features. Can you just give us a summary of the things that we should be checking for? Sure, so uh, on the S4, it's all about the, the control, the navigation, and it's all about the camera. Uh, so this camera takes some of the best pictures I've ever seen, but beyond just how great the photos look, there's just a number of awesome photo features on here which we've checked out. For example, you have the animation feature which is just a party in a box. You take uh, nine seconds of someone or of something moving and then you sort of highlight with your finger what it is that you want to have still and what it is that you want to have moving. So we could take a, a picture of three people and the one in the middle is dancing while the other two are, st are standing still like statues. It's a lot of fun. There's the eraser feature, which is really practical, which solves a common photo bombing problem that you have when you're on vacation and someone walks through your photo. This takes five shots and edits the moving person or object out, and we tried that extensively, and it was really, really accurate. It cut the people who ran into our photo right out. Of course, beyond the camera, you have a variety of, of gesture and eye controls on this, um, some of which are really more of a gimmick than helpful. There, there's, for example, Smart Scroll, which by moving your eyes up and down, allows you to scroll up and down a web page. There's also a number of uh, gestures that you can use, such as Smart Call Accept, where you can wave in front of the screen to pick up a call. And there are other gestures you can use to kind of wave to go back and forth between images in a gallery and so on. But you have to be really close to the screen. So, it, so it's not a great advantage over touching the screen unless you just really can't bear to touch, to touch the screen. Uh, on top of that, of course, we have S Health, uh, which is something that, hel that helps you keep track of your calories, uh, keeps track of your weight and your fitness goals, but it does more than keep track, which is really cool. What it does is it allows you to keep track of your steps. It has an actual pedometer in there and it will tell you how many calories you burn throughout the day while this is sitting in your pocket. So is there anything that consumers should avoid? Like, is there anything that you particularly didn't like? Well, some of the features on this, you know, like the eye control and the gesture control, sometimes seem more gimmicky than helpful. The S translator on this uh, was not particularly good in comparison to the Q translate on the LG phones or to third party translation apps that we've used. Um, but, you know, you, you simply have the option not to use those apps. Overall, you have a lot of apps on here that are highly useful. You know, in addition to the ones we talked about, of course, you have a really awesome keyboard on here that's the best virtual keyboard that we've used. It has wonderful predictive text that is that comes uh, from Sw licensing from SwiftKey. Uh, it has a handwriting keyboard on it as well. You've got awesome multitasking on this like you have on some other Galaxy devices where you can run two windows side by side. 
and you have a watch on feature that allows you to control your TV and get a program guide. So there's just a, a ch this is just chock full of features and some are more useful than others, but even those that don't work that don't work so well, you can just ignore it. Okay, so one question, is this an upgrade or is this a pass? This is an upgrade. It's really hard to say no to this phone. It's got an incredible screen. It's got amazing apps and functionality on it. It has an awesome camera. The software is really innovative. It's really light. And uh, you know, the only thing that could really hold you back is if you're concerned about what kind of battery life you might be getting on it or you don't like the design. So there you have it, the Galaxy S4. Uh, great screen, interesting design. Uh, fantastic camera and a lot of innovative apps.